The moonlight glittered across the undulating waves, casting a silvery glow on David's seasoned face as he leaned over the side of his boat. With practiced hands, he drew in the net, expecting the usual catch of glimmering fish from the alien sea. Quiet night, isn't it, Marley? He murmured to the small, robotic drone hovering nearby, its sensors blinking softly in the dusk. Marley beeped affirmatively, its lights casting shadows on the deck. Weather system stable, David. Optimal fishing conditions. It responded in a crisp, synthesized voice. David chuckled. Yeah, just me, you, and the sea. Wouldn't have it any other way. He resumed hauling the net, muscles tensing with the effort. As the contents spilled onto the deck, amidst the expected cascade of fish, a shimmering figure tangled in the net caught his eye. What in the Marley lights? The drone obeyed instantly, flooding the deck with a bright beam. There, amidst the catch, lay an otherworldly creature with iridescent scales and delicate, gossamer fins. A being straight out of the local legends whispered by the colonists. An alien siren. Marley, is that what I think it is? David's voice wavered between awe and disbelief as he knelt beside the creature, his hands hesitant inches away from its ethereal form. Scanning, Marley hummed, moving closer. Unknown entity. Matches no known terrestrial or extraterrestrial fauna in the database. Caution advised. Ignoring the warning, David reached out gently to untangle the siren. Her eyelids fluttered open, revealing eyes like faceted sapphire pools that seemed to pierce straight through to his soul. She gasped, a sound like the chime of wind through crystal. Easy there. I'm not going to hurt you, David soothed, his voice a soft whisper. He finally freed her from the net, and she sat up, her gaze locked with his, an unspoken understanding flickering between them. Thank you. She spoke in halting, accented words, her voice melodic and resonant. You speak my language? David asked in surprise, his eyebrows arching. A little. I learned from watchers, observers, she explained, her voice a lilting melody that seemed to harmonize with the sound of the waves. David nodded, his initial shock giving way to curiosity. I'm David. What's your name? Seraphine, she replied, her fins shimmering under Marley's lights. Well, Seraphine, you're a long way from any place I know. My cabin's just along the coast. Let's get you warm and figure out what to do next, okay? David offered extending his hand. Seraphine looked at his hand, then at his face, and a tentative smile broke across her features. Yes, I would appreciate that, David. With Marley's assistance, they helped Seraphine to her feet. As they headed toward the shore, the drone hovered close, its sensors quietly whirring, as if in protection. The boat bobbed gently on the calm sea, carrying them towards the unknown yet hopeful shore. Their journey back was filled with an exchange of simple words and shared glances, a silent promise of the beginning of something new. David, ever the solitary fisherman, found his world expanding with every minute spent beside this mysterious siren from the depths of the alien ocean. David's cabin stood alone against the backdrop of rugged cliffs, its windows aglow with warm light as the night deepened. Inside, he had set Seraphine comfortably near the fireplace, wrapped in a thick, soft blanket. The fire crackled, casting a soothing glow that flickered across her serene face and the wet scales of her tail. Marley hovered by the doorway, its sensors dimmed to a gentle pulse. David, environmental parameters adjusted for optimal thermal comfort for the guest, it reported. Thanks, Marley. Keep an eye on the outside, will you? Let me know if anything comes up, David replied, not taking his eyes off Seraphine as he prepared a hot drink in the kitchenette. As he approached with two steaming cups, Seraphine's eyes fluttered open, adjusting to the room's light. She sat up, her gaze settling curiously on the surroundings. Where am I? She inquired, her voice still carrying a melodious undertone. You're in my home, David answered, handing her a cup. It's safe here. This drink should help warm you up. Seraphine accepted the cup, her fingers brushing against his. She smiled faintly. Thank you, David. Your world is different from the depths I know. Sipping his own drink, David settled across from her. I can only imagine. We know very little about your kind, about where you come from, much like how I know little about humans. 
except for tales from the deep, she responded, her curiosity evident. Why do you live so isolated here? David chuckled softly. I like the quiet, the simplicity. It's just been me and Marley for the longest time. What about you? What's your story? Seraphine glanced towards the fire, her expression thoughtful. I wander the oceans, learning and observing. Your nets were unexpected. Sorry about that, David grimaced. Wasn't my intention to catch anything more than fish last night. A moment of silence passed before Seraphine spoke again. Is it always this calm here? Mostly yes, David nodded. It gets stormy at times, but this place is my peace. What's it like, the ocean where you're from? It's vast, full of wonders and dangers too. But like you, I find peace in the depths, Seraphine shared, her voice tinged with nostalgia. David was about to ask another question when Marley's lights blinked urgently. David, you need to see this. He stood and walked over to the window, Seraphine close behind. Outside, the sky had burst into vibrant colors, a phenomenon of this planet's unique atmosphere. Auroras, David explained, caused by solar winds interacting with the magnetic field. It's a common sight here. Seraphine's eyes widened in awe. It's beautiful, she murmured, her reflection mingling with the colors in the window pane. Yeah, it never gets old, David agreed, watching her reaction more than the spectacle. Makes you appreciate the little things, doesn't it? Yes, very much, she agreed, her gaze meeting his. Returning to the fireside, David felt a connection forming, simple and unspoken, yet as profound as the sea from which Seraphine had come. If you're up for it, I'd like to show you around tomorrow. There's a lot to see around here. I would like that, Seraphine said, a gentle smile playing on her lips. And perhaps I could share more of my world with you. That's a deal, David smiled back, feeling an unexpected contentment in her company. As the fire dwindled to embers, the night deepened around them, filled with the promise of new discoveries and a mutual curiosity that bridged their worlds. Together, they watched the last of the flames, both far from their origins, yet finding a surprising solace in each other's presence. Morning light spilled across the horizon painting the sky in hues of amber and gold. David stirred the embers in the fireplace, reigniting the warmth as Seraphine watched from her makeshift seat by the window. You sleep any? David asked, noticing her gaze fixed outside. A little? Your world is very bright, she replied, squinting slightly against the morning sun. Yeah, it takes some getting used to. How about we start with some breakfast? David suggested, moving towards the small kitchen. Seraphine nodded, her curiosity piqued. Do you eat fish here? David laughed as he set up the stove. Yes, we do. Fish is a big part of our diet. What about you? What's typical for your kind? Similar, but we gather from the reefs. I can show you sometime, she offered, her eyes lighting up with the thought. As David prepared the meal, he pulled out a portable translator device. Here, let's make talking a bit easier. He handed it to Seraphine, who turned it over in her hands examining it. How does it work? She asked, her voice filled with wonder. It should translate what I say into your language and vice versa. Here, try saying something, David encouraged. Seraphine spoke a melodic line, and after a brief moment, the device rendered her words in English. This device captures the essence of sound and translates it into words. That's right, David nodded, impressed with the technology's accuracy. Now let's eat and then I can show you around the place. They sat down to a breakfast of scrambled eggs and smoked fish. Seraphine tasted the eggs hesitantly at first, but soon took to them with an enthusiasm that made David smile. This is good, she said, her voice warm with appreciation. Glad you like it. Not sure how it compares to your reef food, though, David replied, taking a sip of his coffee. There is a simplicity here that is comforting, Seraphine noted looking around the small but cozy kitchen. After breakfast, David led Seraphine outside where the world of the coastal cliffs awaited. The land stretched wide under the open sky, the sea a brilliant mirror reflecting the morning sun. This is where I usually walk to clear my head, David shared as they strolled along the cliff edge, the sea breeze tangling his hair. It's beautiful, Seraphine observed, taking in the sprawling ocean view. It feels like home. 
yet it's so different. They spent the morning exploring, David pointing out various plants and explaining their uses. Seraphine listened intently, her mind absorbing every detail. As they returned to the cabin, Seraphine's expression turned thoughtful. David, I have a question. Shoot, he said, as they settled on the porch steps. In my travels, I've learned that many species communicate not just with sounds, but with actions and signs. How do humans share their deepest thoughts? Seraphine asked, genuinely curious. David pondered her question. We talk, we write, we create art. Sometimes, the deepest feelings are shared through music, or a painting, or even a meal cooked with care. Art, Seraphine repeated, musing over the word. Would you show me some of your art? Sure, David replied, surprised but pleased by her interest. Come on in, I'll show you some of my work. Back inside, David pulled out several sketches and landscape paintings he had done over the years. Seraphine examined each piece, her fingers tracing the lines and colors, her face a mask of concentration. These are your views, your feelings about this world, she said, looking up at David with a newfound respect. It's a beautiful way to communicate. Thanks, David said, feeling a flush of pride. It means a lot that you understand that. Their morning of exchanges concluded with a sense of mutual appreciation for each other's cultures and modes of expression. David was learning to see his world through Seraphine's eyes. And in turn, she was beginning to understand the depth of human expression, far beyond the words they spoke. As the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of orange and purple, David and Seraphine found themselves by the shoreline, the sound of waves gently lapping against the sand. David had brought a small portable stove, and together they prepared a simple dinner, fish wrapped in seaweed, a recipe Seraphine suggested from her world. Does it always feel peaceful like this, David? Seraphine asked, her eyes reflecting the twilight hues. Most days, yes. Though sometimes, the sea reflects my mood. Stormy, unpredictable, David replied, flipping the fish with a practiced hand. I understand that. The sea is a mirror for us too, she said, helping him set the cooked fish onto a plate. It's strange how similar our connections to the water are, yet we come from such different worlds. David nodded, handing her a plate. I think that's why I felt a kinship with you right from the start. We're both children of the sea, in our own way. As they ate, the conversation turned to tales of the ocean. David recounting his adventures at sea, and Seraphine sharing stories of the deep, mysterious world she called home. With each story, the space between them filled with laughter and a growing sense of camaraderie. You know, I've never shared these stories with anyone before, David admitted, his voice soft against the crashing of the waves. It feels good to share them with someone who understands the call of the ocean. Seraphine smiled, her eyes warm. And I have never spoken to a human before you. My people usually avoid your kind, fearing misunderstanding and conflict. Why did you decide to talk to me then? David asked, genuinely curious. Something in your eyes when you freed me from the net. You looked at me with concern, not fear. It was different, she explained, her voice tinged with gratitude. Their conversation drifted into comfortable silence, the stars beginning to dot the sky above. After a while, David suggested, How about we try something? I'll teach you how to navigate by the stars, the way sailors on Earth do. Seraphine's face lit up with excitement. I would love that. They spent the next hour discussing constellations, with David pointing out the various star pattern sailors used to find their way at sea. Seraphine was a quick learner, soon able to identify the major constellations herself. This one, the Big Dipper, it helps us find the North Star, David explained, guiding her hand to trace the constellation in the sky. And what does that star do? She inquired, following his gesture. It's constant, always in the north. It's a guide, he said, his tone reflective. Like you are now for me, Seraphine remarked, a gentle smile on her face. David felt a warmth spread through him, his heart beating a tad faster at her words. And you for me. The night grew deeper, and the chill from the sea prompted David to gather their belongings. Let's head back. It's getting cold. As they walked back to the cabin, Seraphine stopped and looked back at the sea. Then at David, thank you for this evening, for sharing your world with me. 
Thank you for being open to it, he responded, feeling a profound connection that he knew would only deepen with time. Back at the cabin, they settled in, each with their thoughts about the evening. David realized that the trust they were building was something rare and precious, a bond forged not just by shared interests, but by the willingness to open their worlds to each other. One crisp evening, as the sky melted into a canvas of deep indigo, David introduced Seraphine to another human tradition, music. He pulled an old guitar from behind the couch in his cabin, the wood glossy under the lamplight. This was my father's, he explained, plucking a few strings to tune the instrument. Music, like the sea, has a way of bringing peace to the soul. Seraphine watched with fascinated eyes, her gaze fixed on the movements of his fingers. Can it speak like art and the stars? She inquired, her voice tinged with curiosity. It can, David confirmed with a nod. He strummed a chord, the sound rich and resonant in the quiet room. It tells stories, conveys emotions, and sometimes it connects souls. Eager to share, Seraphine moved closer. Could you teach me? Of course. David adjusted his position and guided her hands onto the strings. Put your fingers here and strum with your other hand. Following his instructions, Seraphine strummed, a rough but melodious sound filling the air. A delighted laugh escaped her, and she tried a few more chords, each a little smoother than the last. You're a natural, David complimented, his eyes bright with encouragement. Flushed with success and the warmth of the fire, Seraphine turned to David. Now, you play something. Please, let me hear your story. David nodded a soft smile playing on his lips as he positioned his fingers. He played a slow, haunting melody that spoke of the sea, the wind, and lonely voyages under starlit skies. As the last note faded, Seraphine remained silent, visibly moved. That was beautiful, she finally said, her voice soft. It makes me feel not so far from home. Encouraged by the connection, David felt a boldness take hold. Sing for me, Seraphine. If your people share their love through song, I would be honored to hear it. Hesitation flickered in Seraphine's eyes, a vulnerability David had not seen before. Then, as if making a decision, she nodded, taking a deep breath. Her song was unlike anything David had ever heard. It ebbed and flowed like the tide, rich and otherworldly, weaving around the notes of the guitar, still lingering in the air. As the melody enveloped him, David felt as if he were seeing into the heart of Seraphine's world, her joys, her sorrows, and her dreams. It was a gift of trust, and he accepted it with a reverence that stilled his very breath. When the song ended, the silence that followed was deep, filled with a mutual understanding that something significant had shifted between them. That was, David struggled for words, overcome by emotion. Thank you, Seraphine. That was a window to your soul. Seraphine smiled, a mix of relief and contentment on her face. Thank you for listening, for really hearing me. They sat together as the fire dwindled, the warmth between them more than enough to counter the chill of the night. David found himself reluctant to break the enchantment of the evening, and by the unspoken agreement, they stayed seated, the guitar resting forgotten beside them. As the night deepened, their conversation turned lighter laughter mingling with the crackle of the dying embers. David shared humorous anecdotes from his voyages, and Seraphine recounted amusing misadventures from her explorations of the ocean. The night ended with a new, delicate understanding, a bond forged not just by shared interests, but by the sharing of their innermost selves through the universal language of music. The days grew longer, the sun warmer, and the air heavier with the scent of the sea. David and Seraphine had settled into an unspoken rhythm, their days filled with shared discoveries and quiet companionship. But tonight felt different. There was a tension in the air, a current that hummed between them as they stood on the beach, the moon casting a silver glow over the waves. David, leaning on a driftwood log, broke the silence. You've been quiet today. Something on your mind. Seraphine looked out at the horizon, her iridescent hair catching the moonlight. I've been thinking about connections, how different beings form them, how they change us. David tilted his head, intrigued. You mean like us? 
What we're building here? She turned to him, her sapphire-like eyes reflecting the night. Yes, you've shown me things I never thought I'd see. Taught me how your kind finds meaning in the smallest things. Music, art, the stars. And you've shown me the beauty of your world. Your voice, David said, his tone earnest. You brought something into my life I didn't know I was missing. Their gazes held for a long moment before Seraphine smiled, soft and tentative. It's strange. I've always believed my world was complete. But now, it feels as though it wasn't. Not until now. David took a step closer, his voice low. Seraphine, I've spent so much of my life alone. Not because I wanted to, but because I never found someone who could see the world the way I do. Until you. Her breath hitched, and for a moment, she hesitated. Then, as if breaking through an invisible barrier, she reached for his hand. The warmth of her touch sent a thrill through David, her fingers delicate yet strong. You are unlike anyone I've ever known, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. And I don't just mean because you're human. David chuckled softly. Well, you're not exactly like anyone I've ever known either. But that's what makes this U.S. so incredible. He lifted his free hand hesitating before brushing a stray strand of hair from her face. Her skin was cool but tinged with warmth, and she leaned into his touch, her eyes fluttering closed. I've never done this before, she admitted, her voice trembling slightly. Neither have I. At least not like this, David replied, his hand moving to cup her cheek. Slowly, cautiously, he leaned in, their lips met, and the world seemed to fall away. The kiss was tentative at first, a gentle exploration, but soon it deepened, their mutual curiosity igniting into something stronger. Seraphine's arms wrapped around his neck, her touch light yet insistent. David held her close, his hands resting on the small of her back, feeling the smooth texture of her scales beneath his fingertips. When they finally pulled apart, both were breathing heavily, their faces inches apart. That was, Seraphine began, her voice shaky but filled with wonder. Yeah, David agreed, a soft laugh escaping him. It was, she rested her forehead against his, her voice soft. This is new for me, David, but I want to explore it. With you? So do I, he said, his hand moving to gently trace the line of her jaw. Whatever this is, wherever it takes us, I'm in. They spent the rest of the evening wrapped in each other's arms lying on the sand as the waves lapped at their feet. Their connection grew not just in words, but in touch and presence, an unspoken promise forged in the moonlit night. Together, they began to navigate the delicate and thrilling terrain of their shared bond, two beings from different worlds finding a new world in each other. The morning sun streamed through the windows of David's cabin, casting a warm glow on the wooden floors. Seraphine sat cross-legged by the fireplace, her shimmering tail folded neatly beneath her as she studied one of David's books, a collection of earth mythology. These stories, she said, her melodic voice breaking the silence. Your people believe in gods who shape the sea, the wind, even the stars? David, sitting at the table while repairing a fishing net, looked up and smiled. Not believe, exactly. Most of them are just stories. Ways to explain things we didn't understand at the time. Like how the ocean could be both a giver of life and a force of destruction. Seraphine closed the book, her eyes thoughtful. It's fascinating. My people have tales too, passed down through song. We sing of the great currents that guide us, the reefs that protect us, and the leviathans who dwell in the depths. Leviathans, huh? David set the net aside and leaned back in his chair. Sounds like the kind of thing sailors on Earth used to dream up. Sea monsters, krakens. Seraphine tilted her head, her hair catching the light like liquid silver. Perhaps they are not so different from your myths. The Leviathans are creatures of awe, not fear. They teach us respect for the vastness of the sea. David stood and crossed the room, pulling another book from a shelf. He handed it to her with a grin. You might like this one. It's all about Earth's creatures both real and imagined. Some of them might remind you of home. Seraphine opened the book, her fingers gliding over the pages. She stopped on an illustration of a whale, her eyes widening. 
This, this looks like one of the great singers from my world. Wales, David said, sitting beside her. They're some of the most incredible creatures we've got. They sing too, though not in words we understand. She looked up at him, her gaze filled with wonder. Do you think your whales and my singers could be connected somehow? Perhaps long ago, they shared a common ancestor. Could be, David said, leaning closer to study the illustration with her. The ocean's got more mysteries than we'll ever uncover. But I like the idea of a link between your world and mine. Seraphine smiled, her expression soft. It feels comforting, doesn't it? To think we are not so far apart. They spent the rest of the morning sharing stories, trading songs and tales from their respective cultures. David showed her how humans used instruments to create music, demonstrating the differences between a flute and a drum. In return, Seraphine sang a melody from her people, her voice rising and falling like waves crashing against a distant shore. Your music, David said, his voice hushed with awe. It's like the ocean itself, powerful, alive. Seraphine placed a hand on his arm, her touch light but steady. In your art, your music, it's filled with heart. Your people pour their souls into what they create. Guess that's one thing we have in common, David replied, his eyes meeting hers. The connection between them deepened as they shared these pieces of their worlds their laughter mingling with the sound of the waves outside. By the end of the day, they weren't just two beings from different worlds. They were partners, allies, bound by curiosity and the joy of discovery. Together, they began to imagine a future where their worlds could exist side by side, even if only in the space they created together. The morning sea was calm, its surface a mirror reflecting the pale hues of the waking sky. David stood at the edge of the water, pulling the last plank into place on a structure he had been building for weeks, a floating platform with a small, sturdy hut nestled at its center. It was a simple but functional dwelling designed to be tethered near the coast, bridging the world between land and sea. Seraphine swam gracefully nearby, her tail slicing through the water with ease. She surfaced and called out, her voice carrying over the gentle waves. David, it looks wonderful. You've truly built this for us? For you, for us, David replied, wiping his brow. I figured you need a place close to the water, but I didn't want you to feel like you had to leave the land behind. She swam to the platform and hoisted herself onto it, her hair dripping in silvery rivulets. You didn't have to do all this. David knelt beside her, his hand brushing a stray strand of hair from her face. I wanted to. You're part of my world now, Seraphine. This is our way of meeting in the middle. Her eyes filled with emotion as she reached out, her hand resting lightly on his. You've given me more than I could ever ask for. David stood and extended a hand to help her up. Come on, let me show you inside. The small hut was modest but thoughtfully designed. A circular window provided a clear view of the ocean, and inside were simple furnishings, a cushioned bench, a table, and shelves that David had stocked with books and small tools. I thought it'd be a good spot for you to rest after swimming, he explained, gesturing to the bench. And for me to join you when I'm not working. Seraphine ran her fingers over the smooth wood, her expression soft. It's perfect. I've never seen anyone do so much for another. Well, David said, scratching the back of his neck. I guess you bring that out in me. She stepped closer, her eyes searching his. You've changed my life, David. I never thought I could feel this close to anyone outside my kind. And you've changed mine, he said, his voice steady. Before you, I thought I'd spend the rest of my days alone out here. But now, I can't imagine not having you by my side. They stood in the quiet of the hut, the only sound the gentle lapping of waves against the platform. Seraphine reached up, her fingers brushing his cheek. You've taught me so much about trust, about sharing a life with someone. David leaned in, his forehead touching hers. You've taught me just as much about seeing the world differently, about what it means to let someone in. Their lips met in a kiss that was as much a promise as it was an expression of the bond they had built. It was tender, unhurried, and filled with the weight of everything they had shared. When they finally pulled apart, Seraphine smiled her face radiant. Shall we take it for a test? She asked, gesturing to the platform. 
David grinned. Let's do it. She dove into the water with a laugh, her tail gleaming in the sunlight. David climbed into a small boat tied to the platform, rowing alongside her as they explored the waters around their new home. They talked, laughed, and planned, their voices blending with the calls of seabirds and the rhythm of the waves. By the time the sun dipped low on the horizon, painting the sky in shades of gold and crimson, they returned to the floating hut. David dropped anchor, and Seraphine rested her arms on the edge of the platform, watching as he secured the boat. This place, she said, her voice soft, feels like it belongs to both of us. It does, David replied, sitting beside her and dipping his feet into the water. It's ours. As the stars began to appear one by one, they sat in comfortable silence, the future stretching before them like the endless sea. Together, they had built not just a home, but a life, a new dawn for both their worlds.